Well, Spooky? What do you say? Huh? Are you Papa's boy? How are you? You ready to go take a little walk about? Yeah, well, of course. There's Cleo. Are you tired? Was you taking a nap? You were. Cleo, be nice. Okay. What'd you say, Cleo? You think you'll have some kibble? Well, I know you'll come along. And walk with Papa, won't you? You always do. Spooky, be nice. She'll, she'll stomp you. <laughs> yeah, it looks like two of the kitty crew are going to have a little mid-afternoon snack. Oh, it is a beautiful day. It's rather cool. Well, <laughs> if you say 88 school. With a slight breeze. Yeah, I'll take it. At least we're not in the 90s anymore. Oh, well, hello there, friend and family. So good to see you again. And as you can see, we're out and about. Take a little walk about and check our plants. Yeah, we still got some things growing. Some things have survived. And they've pushed on. Just like the little old man keeps pushing on too. And I hope with that, the way things are in the world, and here in America, where the price is so high, I know it's a struggle, and I hope you're continuing on as well. And this video, an episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood, finds you all well, safe and happy, in your neighborhoods too. If you listen quietly, yep, that's Cleo at my feet. Cleo, you just love those shoes, don't you? You love Papa's shoes? Yes, you do. Well, come on, Cleo. Let's take a walk about and check our plants. Well, here we are on the south side driveway garden bed. And you can see better boy tomatoes are surviving. Well, they haven't done a whole lot. But we might be getting some tomatoes soon. It'll be the first ones of this year. Well, at least from these plants. We do have some blossoms on it, as you can see. Well, oh, look at that cherry tomato down there. Now that has continued to grow like nobody's business. But I'm out here to check one other thing. Because we're still planting and getting ready for fall. And I'm hoping the fall garden will be a lot better than the summer one was. So let's check it out. We gotta get really, really low. And we gotta get right down here, right on the ground. Sorry, the camera's shaking a little. But if you look right here, right there, I hope you can see it. That little bitty tiny seedling right there. And there's another one right here. And they're all spread out through here. One here, one there, one there, one here, one here. And maybe you don't know what those little tiny things are. Well, those are collard plants. And if you don't know, collard seeds are rather tiny. So, once they sprout, the plants are ever so tiny too. It looks like we got to water these before we go in. But I just thought I'd show them to you. That's our newest addition to our gardens. There's plenty of collard plants to take us through fall, throughout the winter too. Yeah, down here where I'm at, in the deep south of Alabama, collards will grow all the way through the winter, into the spring, and possibly next summer too. But like I said, look at this here cherry tomato. I think this was a super sweet 100. Ooh, I think we got some more uh, cherries wrapping it up right down in there. I see three right there. Oh, look at there. There's another couple up there. Just enough for a tasty treat. And yeah, the collards we put in in the spring, they're a little droopy right now from the blazing sun, but they're starting to make a comeback too. And if you look back in the July video, you'll see they were almost gone. 
the army worms had ate them up. But they're starting to make a comeback too. And this cherry tomato just keeps growing and running along. Plenty of blossoms all throughout it, as you can see. But we got to go down and check the tire planters and see what's left. What came through the summer heat. But before we do, let's take a look at our garlic chai in the little old pot. And you can see they've all blossomed too. Look at that. And if you don't know what this is, this is a garlic chive scape. And that's how it looks when it first pops up. And then it starts to open up. There's the blossoms, which will form the seeds. And you can eat these when they're at this stage. Just clip them off, dice them on up, throw them in your eggs, a salad. Use them in soups and stews. And what you might not know, they'll impart a very mild garlicky taste with a slight pepper bite. Who knew, right? But they're rather stunning, aren't they? No, I think they are. But let's go down and check those tire planters and see what's going on down there. So yeah, friends and family, I think we're finally through most of the heat. It was supposed to be in the mid 90s today, well, and yesterday too, but somehow God blessed us with a cool wave. Yesterday it only got up to 83, and today, well the weatherman says it's 88 wherever he is, but here it only made it to 86, and we got Speedy out here laying in the grass. I'm sure she's after something, we'll just have to see. Speedy, what are you after? Is there a squirrel? Are you hiding? in the grass or is it a birdie it's a birdie are you sure oh you my littlest princess you are you talking to papa i love you too yep she's out after something she's a mighty hunter as you can see she actually thinks she can hide in that grass from whatever it is she sees up there. So here we are down at my old tire planters. And in here we got four peppers, two green bells, a banana, and a lunchbox pepper. And you can see right there. There's a nice red ripe lunchbox waiting for us to munch on. And there's more. As you can see, it's doing quite fine. Now the bell peppers, I think we picked six or eight off them. It currently doesn't have any at the moment. But there are blossoms coming on. And with cooler temperatures, we should have many more. We've got a lot of growing time left. we got the rest of this month, September. October and if we're lucky most of November and maybe into December but look at how pretty those banana peppers are and there's quite a few I can see right here one two three four five six seven eight nine just as we're kneeling down right here Woo. And like I say, if you look back in July, they were rather sickly looking. But I'm noticing I got some unwelcome friends right here. Now I'm not sure what kind of bugs they are, but they've been hanging out on this banana pepper for a few days now. They're not too friendly and they're rather shy. We'll have to do something. We'll probably smush them. I hate to say it, but that's life. And over here, where we had eight collard plants, 
and the army worms devastated them and finally ate them to death. But we still have one and it's making a comeback. Yeah, I have faithfully watered it each and every day. When the army worms finally got finished with it, it only had two leaves. But as you can see, it's starting to flourish again. And I also planted some kale down here in this tire planter. And I've been wanting to see if any of it has come up. But so far, I can't see a thing. Maybe it will. Or maybe it won't. The seed was rather old. But I'm rather proud of this little old collard plant. It's come through a lot of diversity. And it's still here. Getting ready to produce food. So I just couldn't let it die. As long as it was willing to live and struggle on, I was willing to care for it. And that's something I'd like to say. A lot of times in life, we give up, we lose hope. Whether it's in our gardens, our homes, or in our lives. And what we got to understand, and I hope the young ones do, as soon as you lose your hope, it's all going to end. And it will die. And that's the way I look at all of life. I'm always full of hope. Whether it's about a person, an animal, a plant, or what have you. Because without hope, there's no going forward. And nothing will come to be. So the message today in Mr. Tom's neighborhood is embrace the hope. Look to the future and continue on. Because without that, there is no future. And it all ends with the loss of hope. So that's enough of that. And that's even more important these days. Because see, my little garden plantings were suffering greatly. But they didn't give up hope. And I didn't either. And now they're starting to flourish again, as I hope. Once I get through my radiation treatments, I too will flourish again and proceed on. I'm thinking I will, because I have not lost hope. Whew, that was looking so much better. It's a lot of new green growth. Leaves are all nice and green. Plants are all big and bushy now again. Yeah. We didn't give up on you babies. And you didn't give up on me. So yeah, we'll walk up to the old clothesline plant. Check it out. Hopefully we don't disturb whatever Speedy here is trying to uh, jump on. <laughs> whatever it is, it's got her attention. We'll try to be very, very quiet and just walk on up and not, you know, that's what I thought. Look at right there. Look at Mr. Bushytail Squirrel. I knew she had something in her sights. Mr. Squirrel, you better stay up high because Speedy, she loves squirrel. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> Hang in there, little buddy. I think he'll be fine. Him and Speedy have been going at it all year. She hasn't caught him yet. <laughs> so, walk on up here. At least we're in the shade. Now, up here at the old clothesline planting, we got three pepper plants. This one right here is a green bell. 
and look at these bell peppers. Look at that one. If you think that one's starting to look fine, look at this one down here. Look at that. Woo! That's a mighty fine looking pepper. And it's got a way to go. But it's got another one right up under there. And another one right there. So that's four more peppers coming on that plant. And over the course of the summer season, we pick six off. So if these four make it, we'll be up to 10. And this is an orange lunchbox right here. And you can see two peppers, new peppers, right there. A lot of new growth, a lot of new blossoms, as you can see. And the third one down there is another bell. Let's go check it out. Oh, I didn't know. It's got some peppers too. Whoa, let's peek under here. There's one. There's a second one down there. And right there is a third. So we got three down here. Making for a total of seven. That are coming on. Not too bad considering the summer I've had. And they're all green and happy. Looking mighty fine. Except they haven't been watered this evening. But we'll do that. When y'all head on. Of course our tomatoes. Two of the early girls gave up the ghost. Nothing but bare ground. But this one. That I got to tie up. Continued on. Got some new blossoms there. And it's got this new shoot coming right out of the rootstock right there. So it's still hanging on too. So tomorrow I'll get out here, tie it up, give it a little support. I'll keep watering it and feeding it. Because if you saw, it was all brown and dead. Not more than a month ago. And like a phoenix that rose up out of the ashes, it made a comeback. So let's give it a little love and a little care. And I might even, I've got some seeds started for fall tomatoes. So we might be back up here planting a couple more. And like I've told you in the previous walkabout, the yellow crookneck squash, we got one squash and then it got covered up in powdery mildew. And that was the end of that. Oh, I see this pepper plant dropped a pepper right there. So we would have had four, but it dropped that one. I guess it decided it was only capable of supporting three babies right now. But it's got some others that might make it. Now it's going to drop that one too. Well, now that the heat's finally subsiding maybe it'll stop dropping peppers because that's what plants do during this blazing heat wave we've had for so long and of course a drought and you might think watering does as well as rain well you'd be wrong nothing replaces a rain especially not city water with the chlorine the fluoride and whatever else in it I pray for rain and we've been awful dry here again it seems like we'll get a rain and we'll go for days to a week or two without Cleo are you just hanging out <laughs> and we got speedy and spooky down here as always they're not too far from Papa are you guys yeah, that's my Spooky. I love you, Spooky. You my boy. You my boy. I love you, I love you, I love you. Love you. <laughs> you want to play? You want to play? You want to play? <laughs> oh, you awful frisky today. Well, we're here in the shade, and we got that cool breeze 
coming out of the northeast. Well, that's the state of my gardens. But I might add, if you'd look back in July of this year, they were really rather sad. But things are looking up. And I take that as a good sign. Then maybe the entire year will look better than how it all started out. And the fig tree, it's done quite well. We've ate a lot of pigs this year, me and the birds. I think the birds got about 40% and old Mr. Tom got about 60%. Yeah, yeah, I could throw a net over it, save it all for me, but I don't mind sharing with my feathered friends. They gotta eat too, of course. You'll hear them in the background many a times, singing their songs and talking to old Mr. Tom. But it looks like we got them all. I just ate one two days ago, and I thought that was the last one. And it appears to be so. Guys, y'all are getting a lot more energetic now that the temperatures are cooling off. They had really slowed down in that oppressive heat. And I must say, I had to. Let's sit down a moment before we head her on in. Well, friends and family, there you have it. Things are looking up. Of course, I know compared to some, they may still look a little sad. But the whole point of this and this year has been even as bad as it's been, both health-wise and garden-wise. I didn't give up. And to me, that's the most important part. No matter how bad I felt, no matter how tired I was, I continued on. And I'm going to tell you, there's been days when I just didn't want to get up off the couch. But my advice to all of you is, you know, come up with something, anything. Find a passion that gets you back on your feet. And it may be a struggle. It may be hard at times. But if it gets you up out of bed, get you off that couch or chair, on those feet and moving about, it's a good thing. Talk to your doctor. He'll tell you what I said is right. And always, never give up on hope in all things so yeah i gotta head her on in because it's getting late in the afternoon before i do i gotta do my watering and then i gotta put some chow together for you guessed it the kitty group and my little princess gracie which i'm sure is sitting by her food bowl because it's about time for her too i will be eating leftovers you saw me put them together you know, my chicken pot pie stew. And if you haven't watched that video, maybe you should. Because that is really, really yummo. <laughs> and it wasn't made out of much. There's my fur. There's my feathered friend, the mockingbird. Saying hi. So glad you came by. He too. And I'm thinking it's a he. Of course, it could be a she stays right overhead, no matter where we go. It's rather strange, I might add. So yeah, I just wanted to do something today to show you where we're at and what we got going on and maybe inspire you. You know, inspire you to get up, get doing something. It don't gotta be outside. You know, take up knitting, crocheting, small woodcrafts. What have you? Hey, start an online business if that's what you want to do. Or you can get a camera. Editing software and all of that. And join Mr. Tom right here. In his neighborhood. On YouTube. You can do that. If old Mr. Tom can. And I'll watch your videos too. Because some of you in the comments have told me you've got channels. And on, when time's available, I pop in and say hi. 
Can't do it every day. But I check up on you too, just like you check up on me. So, as you know it goes. Y'all take care out there. Stay safe. May God bless you all as you bless those in your lives. We love you for everything you do to make our lives better here too. Goodbye for now. I hear you. I think he's saying the bird feeders are empty too. So, we got some seed. Before we go in, we'll have to do that too. Oh, later all.